How are we doing guys? It's just finished after the Lanier Arsenal 2 and that right there is a that right there is a big win and a huge, huge start to the season. So as you know, Arsenal beat Aston Villa by two goals to nil. Um and that game was a lot a lot of roller coaster emotions, I'll tell you that for certain. You know, it started off um we started off on the front foot in the last, in the first, sorry, 15 and 20 minutes. And then we kind of fell asleep again. And I was sitting there thinking, right, well, we're falling asleep. It's allowing Villa to get back in the game, allowing them to get back onto us and performing the high press to go up, up and down the pitch, right? And about 20 and 20 minutes later, Gabriel's there making a mistake, like... Holding, like, kind, kind, kind of shrugging off Morgan Rogers off his shoulder. Rogers then puts his foot underneath his leg, taps it through, and Watkins is just through in. And how he missed, how the hell did Ollie Watkins miss that? Um, listen, it's a good, it's good for us that Watkins has missed that, um, to be fair with you. Um, no, I mean, Watkins, I'd expect him to score that. Um, but yeah, after that, then it was a pretty even game, and then we brought it into half time. It was nil nil. Uh, I got I, I got on a WhatsApp call with my friend for about f f fifty minutes. We, we we were speaking about the game and the first half analysis, and we and he and I was saying to him, if Trossard comes on, he's scoring. And what happened? We bought off Martinelli, and we bring on Trossard, and Trossard scored. And then Thomas Partey scored as well, and then that kind of wrapped things up again, didn't it? So, there you go. Um, it wasn't the best of, of performances. That's something I will admit. It wasn't the best of performances. But it's one to think now that that's, that is the first of our, of our difficult run of fixtures dealt with, dealt with now. That is the first of the difficult run of fixtures won now. Yeah, you know, we still we've got Brighton on Saturday, which again is going to be a very, very difficult game. After watching them today against Manchester United, they were superb. Um, I'll, I'll actually be be away in Ireland for that one because I'll explain the lane of everything when I'm in, in in a preview to the Brighton game. But for now, though, um, and then we got an international break for about a week, you know, and we come back and we got the North London derby, and then we got City away. Both them games away, by the way. The North London, no, the North London, no, the North London derby and City are both away. And then Leicester at home, Bournemouth away, Southampton at home. All of these are winnable. But to get through this kind of patch, we need to be... We, we kind of need to be playing the right players with, with the right frame of mindset. You know what? Do you understand what I mean by that? We look flat in that first half. And now, now I'm not saying that, oh, we didn't deserve to win because, you know what I mean? There was no VAR controversy today anyway, so that's something to be proud of. Um, David Rea with an absolute unbelievable save in the second half. How the fuck he saved that? I don't, I, I don't know if that... Oh, now that's having a shot on goal. It affects Gabriel. And the looks like it's kind of going over, like, it's kind of chipping up. Like, over like that and then it's kind of going over like that and then Ryas jumped and it's hit the bar and, and, and it's come back down to Watkins he's headed it Ryan, ha Ryan has to get back up quickly and just fucking save it and oh my god I don't even know man it's it's game week two and I'm sitting there thinking that's probably the save of the season already mm -hmm. that save from David Raya has was absolutely instrumental he kept us in the game today another great save in the first half as well I think it was the one from Leon Bailey as well. So, yeah. That's two wins and that's two clean sheets for us now. Um, keep this going. Really keep this going. Because we could end the month at the top of the table. You know, Friday transfer deadline day. I'm hoping to get the Marino, the, the, the Marino deal in, in the door by then. Well, I'm sure it's going to be announced within the next day or two. By the way, when he comes in, when he comes in the team, it's gonna go from, it's gonna go to some other level. But 
Yeah, yeah, listen. Um, good win, fantastic win. Um, after what Villa done to us twice, twice last season, we had to get back at them. We had to, had to get back at them. We are not taking an another defeat at Villa Park. Trossard again, ole ole, my friend. And then Thomas Partey, uh, what did I tell you? He he can hit them. Partey can hit them like a rocket. A rocket, blood. But yeah, listen, um, let's get into the player ratings. Um, starting off in goal, David Rea, my, my man of the match today, I thought was superb. Absolute superb. That that save again, man, I just can't stop thinking about it. Rea gets a 10. He is my player of the match. And, and you can see now why, I think. And I think now you can see why we... Why we brought him in and replaced Aaron Ramsdale. Because Ramsdale for me is not saving that. There is no way Ramsdale is getting even his hand onto that. I remember the same sort of thing happened when Ramsdale was in, in the Nets against Southampton a few years ago. I think it was two seasons ago when when, when Southampton come to Emirates and drew 3-3. Three, three. And I think it was like a lob or something. And you know what I mean? Ramsdale, he didn't save it. And he just fell back into the net and God's sake. Um I think it might have been Carlos Alcaraz who did that to him actually. If I can't remember, I think it was. But yeah, listen, um Ryan gets a 10 for me. Superb performance from him today. Uh left back was Julian Timber, <coughs> as I predicted. He did start the game. Um Again, superb performance from him as well. And we can see the difference in the fluidity between Timber and Zinchenko. And I think Timber just brings that little more balanced balance to the team. Z Zinchenko's a bit everywhere, a bit all over the place. Um, Timber Timber today was superb. I'm gonna give Timber an eight. Uh, Gabriel, I thought there was a few a few worrying moments in there, like the one with Morgan Rogers and Watkins. And but apart from that, I thought Gabriel had a good game. Um, but yeah. I'm going to give Gabriel a 6. And that's pretty low, I know. Um, Saliba next to him. I'm going to give Saliba a 9. I thought that little altercation he had with, with John McGinn just after half-time was kind of funny. When they were slapping lapping each other around the head and big up to Saliba, man. And Yeah, listen. Um, I can't really say much more about that one, to be honest with you. Um, Saliba gets a 9. Ben White right back, I thought... Didn't have much to do, to be fair. To be fair with you, John McGinn didn't really come down his side as much as he normally does. Um, I think what I think what Villa were playing was they were playing McGinn out on, out on the wing and then Morgan Rogers through the middle. Who, by the way, had a fantastic game today, Morgan Rogers. I did tell you about him in the preview, didn't I? I did tell you man about him, didn't I? But yeah, listen. Um, ben White's gonna get an eight for me. Uh, Thomas Party, he did score. He he did score. Um, and I can hear his interview downstairs. Um, but yeah, listen. Um, Thomas Party for me is gonna get a seven. I thought there were some sloppy moments in there, but then some <coughs> moments were were really good for him. The goal as well, it, it was beautiful. I I told you, he, I told you he can hit him. Um, Declan Rice for me will get an eight. I thought had a good game. I thought well, was running his absolute bollocks off, um, trying to get the ball off of Morgan Rogers. Done well successfully a few times. Rogers got the better of him a few times, and they're, they're even now. Just got to wait till the game at the Emirates, and then and then we'll see who wins out of the two. But yeah, yeah, listen. Um, Rice for me had a good game. Um, I've got no problems with his game at, at all today. Um, Trossard, sorry, Martinelli on the left. I thought. Effective in the first half, came out at the start of the second half and didn't look himself. Um, Trossard came on then and got a goal. and That's why you know Trossard's the better player right now. And Martinelli, I've, I've, I feel for the guy because he's not really getting a chance to score. You have to pass it to teammates and God's sake, it's going to be one of those seasons again for Martinelli, isn't it? But I think I feel like once Marino comes in, Martinelli Martinelli's going to be unleashed. Um, but yeah, um, through the middle with Odegaard again. Um, first off was pretty quiet. Second half came out and looked effective, so I'm gonna give Odegaard a seven. 
Um, Saka on the right, I thought he got the assist for the Trossard finish. Or was it the, I mean, sorry, the party finish. Um, but apart from that, they didn't, didn't really do anything. He wasn't as effective as he, as he was against Wolves last weekend. Um, but to be honest with you, Saka's going to be one of those things like, like, like that, right? Saka's that kind of player. He he does fuck all for about eight minutes and then pulls up with an assist out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Saka's just that kind of guy. So Saka's going to get an eight. And then Havertz up top, I thought his runs were good. But again, there was a chance that was crossed in for Martinelli and Havertz. All he had to do was just bury it in, but didn't. But listen, I'm I'm, I'm not the one who's going to sit here and complain, lane about it. Havertz is going to get a seven for me. Uh, uh, into the subs, I think we only made about two or three. Uh, Trossard came on. Of course, got a goal. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give him an eight because got a goal. Looked really good. Um, and yes, I would start him against Brighton. Spoiler alert. Um, Trossard for me is always right now. He's he's the better option than Martinelli. And I I I say it in the previews all the time these days. Play the guys who are on form. Play Trossard. He's on form, mate. Um, who else? Come on. No, oh, yeah, it was three three changes, wasn't it? Uh, Calafiori came on. Didn't really have much to do to to be fair. Premier League debut for him, so just for a Premier League debut, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna give him a seven. And Reese Nelson, and uh, he didn't really do anything. Didn't really have a lot to do. Um, if I'm honest with you, um. Uh, it was it was it was only on for like two minutes and stuff and yeah he's not going to do much in two minutes is he so yeah listen um there we go that that is it for the match re review Aston Villa nil Arsenal two um let me know your thoughts down below did we deserve to win did we deserve to draw lose whatever um if you're new around here hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you lot soon I'm out of here peace.